morning and a great big blessed Sunday morning to each one of you friends that are tuning in for a few minutes here at the little studio in Wilkes County, North Carolina. And let me say, as glorious as our time was down at Sunset Beach this past week, if you've been following uh, our little travels, Miss Ann and myself are glad to be back home in Wilkes County with our family and our friends. Uh, and we sure are glad that you stopped by for a little bit as well. It's our sincere wish that something that we share here this morning will be uplifting and encouraging to you and your walk with the Lord. Uh, and if you've never had a relationship with Him, don't worry, because He knows you. He's always known you because He made you. And it's not too late to come to Him in repentance of sin and place your life in His hand by faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. And while you're not forgetting things, I don't want you to forget to come over and join us here just in a little bit over at Perlier, North Carolina this morning. About 11 o'clock, right, right on the nose as a matter of fact, if everything goes all right, at 11 o'clock for the worship service at Arbor Grove United Methodist Church. Just tune in Facebook uh, and the Facebook page of the same name, Arbor Grove United Methodist or if you're already watching this broadcast on Facebook, just stay tuned at 11 o'clock, and hopefully, Lord willing, we'll be there. Pastor Susie's supposed to be a preaching from Luke chapter 10 this morning, and she's going to be talking about getting straightened up in Christ. So come on over and let's all get straightened up in Jesus if we can. Now be with us at 11 if you'd like. You know, it's no secret that Miss Ann and I have always shared a love for watching and identifying birds, and it's something that both of us enjoyed doing when we were kids uh, before we knew each other. And when we met, it was one of the things that we had in common. Uh, every year, we try to identify and, if possible, photograph a few birds that we've never seen before. And about 32 years ago, when we started going to the coastal area of North Carolina uh, around Sunset Beach for vacation each year, we started studying the birds in that area, particularly the ones that we don't see up here in the mountains very much. And after we'd been at it for a few years, we were used to the common herons and other water birds that were pretty easy to spot. We saw them a lot. And, uh, you know, some of those birds are so used to people down there that they will just about sit down and eat lunch with you. Uh, <laughs> and particularly the uh, different types of seagulls, they'll come up and just take your sandwich right out of your hand if you'll let them. But as the last several years have gone by, we've had to learn to be very patient. And instead of spending a lot of time out in the swamps and nature preserves where we used to go a whole lot, uh, trying to run them down with a camera and a pair of binoculars, we've learned something. We've learned to quieten down, to pick a location, and just sit down and let the birds come to us. And above all, we've had to watch and look even longer and harder for some of these small species of birds. Some of them are just three or four inches long, but they're there. And another thing that's just miraculous for us to discover in these areas, we've been in some of these places many times and been there for long periods of time, yet because of migration patterns, uh, particularly at different times of the year, we didn't know what was right under our noses in terms of bird life right there all the time where we thought we'd seen it all. And because of learning to be more patient and more observant, uh, not taking old familiar locations for granted. We've managed this past week to identify and photograph seven new birds for our life list. Now, I'm, I'm happy about that. It's pretty exciting for uh, a couple of old married folks that have a hobby like this. Now, I know that you didn't tune in for a lesson in bird watching this morning. But uh, this week ministered to us in another respect, and we want to share that thought with you. Just like finding fresh new things in God's wonderful world that he created that we've never really seen before, and you know that can be exciting for our day-to-day -day lives, 
finding and studying the promises of God in His Word right here can make our day-to-day -day lives more real, more satisfying, and more rewarding than anything else we'll study. And all through His Word, He promises that He's doing a new thing with us if we'll just have faith and follow Him. Now, you can find these scriptures in Old and New Testaments alike. Now, here's just a few that I want to share with you this morning. To begin with, if you go all the way back into the Old Testament book of Job, we find God talking about a new situation for Job. Even though Job, if you remember the story, or if you've ever heard it, Job was sick. He had lost most of his family uh, through uh, accidents and pestilence, one thing and another. And he'd been robbed, and he was a wealthy man at one time, and he had been, uh, all these things had gone away for him, and even his health had turned bad, and he was sick. He was almost on his deathbed, covered with sores. And in the middle of all this, God comes to him with a new thought. He says, though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. Well, Job was faithful. He got down in the dumps, but he was faithful. And he didn't curse God, and he didn't blame God, and, and, and he, uh, he had questions. He got kind of down in the dumps, but you know, because he was a faithful man, God gave him greater in terms of even possessions, but most of all, his spirit. God gave him more at the end of his life than he had at the first of it, and he had a lot to begin with. All the way back in the Old Testament book of Ezekiel, God promises a new thing for his chosen people, the Hebrews, even though they have sinned and disobeyed him. He promises them a new heart. If you go back to Ezekiel uh, chapter 11, verse 19, it says, And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh. Their heart toward God had, had turned hard. And give them a heart of flesh. Well now, we know that God promises us, as followers of his son Jesus, that we'll be given a new heart, that we'll be given a new start, and we'll be given a new home with him. If only we will have faith and believe in him. The faith has to be there first. If you go up to the New Testament, here's something else in the New Testament, a new thing. You'll find God saying that if we have a saving relationship with him through his son, it's like forgetting your old sinful self. Have you got things about yourself you'd like to forget? I sure do. Well, God says we can have that and we can put on a new you, just like you'd put on new clothes. Would you like a new you? You know what can happen? In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22, it says that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, after which God is created in righteousness and true holiness. In other words, we're given a new chance, a new shot at life with faith in Jesus. It doesn't matter what we've done in the past. It only matters what we believe in now. And we don't do it with our own power because we've seen that that's too weak. We can't affect our own salvation. We do it by putting our life and our will in the hand of God through repenting of our sin, turning around to God and saying, Lord, I've messed up. I'm a sinner. Please help me out of this situation and have faith in his son Jesus. And Jesus will get you there. He's the one that made the sacrifice for us. He will help us take off the old man or the old self and put on the new one. And he'll do that just like we put on a new shirt or a new pair of pants or a new dress. And finally, how about those things that weigh us down, that make us hurt? He's going to change that too. 
those things that cause us to cry and sometimes even lose hope and doubt, uh, maybe have doubts about God and his plan for us, these are all going to go away in the new creation that he invites us to be a part of. And you'll find these promises in the end of the Bible, in the book of Revelation. I've heard so many people say, oh, that book of Revelation, I really can't understand that thing. Well, I bet you can understand this. Let me read you a verse, just one verse. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Can you understand that? Friends, that's our tears he promises to wipe away. Are you crying for some reason? Have you got tears on the outside? Maybe tears on the inside too? God says he's going to do the wiping. He'll do the cleaning up, the drying up, and not only of the tears, but also the reason for the tears, the sorrow, the pain, and all those sinful, painful, awful reasons that we have that makes us cry. And his word has said these things and promised these things for centuries, hundreds, even thousands of years. It's just like those birds down there at the coast. You know, they're there, they've always been there, but for whatever reason, we don't sit down often enough, quietly enough, and look patiently enough for them. God's Word's the same way, and His promises are available for us simply by opening up His book, reading His Word, and asking His help in understanding how to use the knowledge. He promises that his word will not return void. That means it won't leave you untouched. If you go to God with an open mind and an open heart and you open up his word and you read wanting his effect on your life, then it will not leave you untouched. He makes that promise. If you really want to have a saving relationship with the Lord, then believe on his son, Jesus Christ, as his only begotten son who died and rose again to pay for your sins and my sins and ask him to come into your heart as your Savior. He'll give you a new heart for him. And if you've already asked him these things in the past, then you know how a new thing feels, don't you? If you never have asked him, then don't wait because we don't have the promise of even another breath or another minute. And if you ask, he'll guide you. And you'll be amazed at how good a new life can feel. It doesn't matter if you're young, if you're old, if you're weak or sick, or if you're on drugs, got an alcohol problem, or if you're the picture of health and you're carrying a big wallet full of money. You still have something new waiting for you, something that you don't want to miss with the Lord. So don't pass it up, okay? Amen. Here's a song that I used to hear the folks sing at church and when I was a little fella and I played it with a mini of a quartet and it's supposed to take a whole quartet to sing it. Well, I'm going to kind of swell up and yodel through the, the parts as best I can, just one fella. And uh, you can have a good life with me, but you can sing it along too. The Lord promises a lot of new things. And one thing he promises is we're going to have a new glorified body. And a lot of things are going to change for us. That's what this song sounds like. On that resurrection morning, when all the dead in Christ shall rise, I'll have a new body, praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Won't it be so bright and fair, when we meet our loved ones there, I'll have a new body, praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. I'll have a new home of glory eternal where the redeemed of God shall stand. There'll be no more sorrow, no more pain, there'll be no more strife. Raised in the likeness of my Savior, ready to live in paradise. I'll have a new body, praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. And we walk the 
streets of gold. I'll have a new body, praise the Lord. I'll have a new life. No more pain or worry or sorrow in this wicked world of sin. I'll have a new body, praise the Lord. I'll have a new life. I'll have a new home of glory eternal where the redeemed of God shall stand. There'll be no more sorrow, no more pain. There'll be no more strife. Raised in the likeness of my Savior, ready to live in paradise. I'll have a new body, praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. I'll have a new body, praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Folks, I'll tell you what, it's going to be good when we get there. We can't even tell how good it's going to be. But I want to see you there and all of you. So have a good week. Keep the Lord in mind if you've never met him, now's the time to go ask. I hope to see you next week. Have a good Sunday. Praise God. Amen.